first mentioned in the writings of Su Yi describing Princess Tong Chang playing the Leaf King in the year 868 CE. Playing cards have a rich history and have made and made themselves an icon in several cultural cultural cultures around the world. Playing cards are a nice choice whenever you're enjoying a fun family night or hanging out with your friends. Even if you have no one to play with at all, you can always still play a game of solitaire. There's tournaments for poker and blackjack, and sem seemingly endless numbers of varying deck styles. It seems like no matter how you look at it, playing cards are the right choice for almost any occasion. I remember the times whenever I would be staying up and I would play card games with my family. Or if it was a storm and the power would go out, we'd all stay up and just play card games to pass the time. Or whenever I went out with my friends, or we were on a trip, or we were just going out to eat, we would just play a game of cards just to have fun. My first memory of a magic trick was with my dad. And my dad had showed me this one magic trick, and I remembered that I just cons like continuously tried to figure out how he did it. And I'd tell him, I'd be like, show me again, I'm gonna see how you did it this time. Then I'd go back and I'd just try to play with the cards and figure out exactly how he did it, but I can never figure it out on my own. And eventually, I just had to go up to him and say, all right, I give up, Dad, how'd you do it? And he told me how to do it, and I thought, like, it was mind blowing. I was like, now I know the secret that nobody else knows. And so then I went around to all my friends, all my family, and I showed everybody. I was like, oh yeah, look at how I could do this cool card trick, even though, being little, I still couldn't really do the card trick and ended up showing everybody how I was doing the card trick in the first place. But everybody played along, so it was still, you know, just as much fun for me. And it was kind of from that moment on, whenever I kind of made that one of my passions in life, was just to figure out how to do as many card tricks as possible, be able to actually do the card tricks at this point, and then go out and show everybody that I knew how to do it, and they did. Now, my card collection, next slide. This is kind of like a very slim chunk of my card collection. It was kind of hard getting it all in one picture. I've got basically a big drawer of just decks of cards. But it started out kind of as just a fun little thing. I liked how the different cards looked and all that. And so I decided, oh, well, I'll just start, you know, I'll get a deck here, get a deck there. And so whenever I'm like feeling sick or if I'm just having a bad day and my mom's out and about and she sees a deck of cards, she might pick one up for me and she'll bring it home. And she's like, hey, I got this for you. Or I might get a deck of cards for Christmas or something like that. Or they might even give me decks of cards like whenever my family goes on vacation and they might get me a deck of cards because I wasn't able to go. Kind of like this one whenever they went up to DC. Or um, I got some of them, which I got because they looked like they were cool. Go ahead to the next one. Like this one or the next one. And then one more. <coughs> and one more. And then I got other ones just because they kind of had like a funny design like this one. It's the Bigfoot design, and they actually have a joke on every card, and so I can't remember any of them, and I probably should have brought some in, but they're all extremely corny, and it was well <laughs> worth the money that I paid for it. <laughs> um, a, lot of, um, a lot of my decks do have memories associated with them, like the next one. Like this one I got whenever I went to Walmart at 2 in the morning with my friends. No, we weren't intoxicated, but we were definitely having a lot of fun. I kind of just got it because I was like, this is a fun night. It might as well have something to remember it by, right? Or the next one. I got another deck. It's the same deck as the one before, the funny one, but I got it at Target with my friend, uh, family, and we just thought it was so funny. I was like, yeah, I definitely got to get this one. Go ahead to the next one. And then, cards have really changed me. Um, growing up, whenever I was younger, I really wanted to be a magician. And it's kind of when a, a point in every kid's life whenever you kind of grow up and you realize maybe the thing that I really want to do is the thing that I can do. But I still watch all the magic television shows or whenever I went to the store, the toy stores, I'd get like the little magic sets or anything like that. But then when I really started playing magic or learning magic, I was always interested in card tricks. Because with a card trick, you can do it with just a regular deck. You don't necessarily have to have the whole setup or anything like that. And so if you're at a party or something and your friends are playing cards, you can just go up and take a deck of cards and do amazing things with it and people would never know how you did it. But the real reasons that I have such a fond love for cards isn't really anything to do with, you know, anything to do with my family, but more or less just to do with 
me and people as a whole. See, because whenever I was growing up, I really realized that I didn't have a lot in common with the other kids. And a lot of times, I really didn't know how to start a conversation with somebody. And I really didn't know how to end a conversation. And it wasn't until a little bit later in my kid years that I would really understand that I had something called Asperger's. And for those of you that don't know what Asperger's is, the Autism Society first described it as autism-like behaviors and difficulties with social and communication skills in boys who had a normal intelligence and language development. So what that means is that I'm not necessarily dumb, but I also, I also have a fairly good way of communicating. It's just that whenever it comes to putting those tools that I know into use with other people, it gets a little bit construed, and so I might not necessarily know how to come up to somebody and just start talking to them. And then if I do end up getting myself into a conversation, I can't get myself back out. And magic kind of gave me that in and out for it. And uh, Asperger's was actually umbrellaed under a new term called Autism Spectrum Disorder. And Autism Speaks says that it basically because whenever they, they have a something called the DSM, and it's a, basically a big book, and it has all these different mental disorders in them. And so whenever you have, they have different versions of it. And so from, the, the, from four, they had Asperger's in it. But then whenever they transitioned into the fifth version, they ended up putting it under there. But magic gave me that in and out of conversation. And so if you're at a party or if you're just sitting there by yourself and you're playing with playing cards, typ typically people will come up and ask you about them, which was kind of nice at first because I was like, okay, now I've got people coming up to me. And then if they like magic, they'll often ask you. They're like, okay, do you know any card tricks? And it kind of gives you that very first initial thing just to get something out of the way so that way you can build on it later. So it, it really helped me to make a lot of the friends that I have now because it really brought them to me. I didn't have to go and try to search for other people. But playing cards have really taught me a lot of things about life and friendship. And a lot of my playing cards hold memories with them. When I have them, I feel like I almost have a family, or a piece of my family with them. I've had my collection for years now, and I can't wait to add new memories to it. 